Shalom. When I was contacted and asked to present a brief lesson from a favorite verse or verses of Scripture, the challenge was to which Scripture would be chosen. There are many that have special significance to each of us, and it might be difficult to decide which one to select. It can also be challenging, if not often unfair or even inappropriate or even invalid, to pull a verse out of context. So the scripture that we're looking at this today is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 13 and verse 33. Before we get back there, let's go back and look at the context and then listen for the word of the Lord. In the chapters leading up to this verse, Jesus has been walking with his apostles and his disciples, collecting crowds as he walked among the villages along the northern coast of the Sea of Galilee, apparently creating quite a stir among villagers, other rabbis, and certainly the Pharisees and other leaders in the synagogues. In speaking to the crowds, Jesus had just placed a curse on Chorazin and Bethsaida and strongly chastised the town of Capernaum for their failure to repent after all the miracles that he had performed and carried out in those towns. His disciples had eaten grain as they walked through a ripened field on the Sabbath. Jesus had even healed the withered hand of a man in the synagogue, in the synagogue at Capernaum, on the Sabbath. The Pharisees were so mad that they began plotting how to kill him. Jesus leaves there and continues to heal folks as he walks, further shocking some of the Pharisees and some of the other rabbis who then began asking him for a sign to prove his authority. Well, as the crowd grew, Jesus left the house that he was in and walked along the coast of Galilee. And he ends up in a boat talking to the crowd on the beach. And it's from here that he speaks to them all in parables using situations with which they were all very familiar and integrating scripture with which they were also all very familiar. We must remember that in Jewish culture, children began to learn scripture, the Torah for boys and the Psalms and some of the prophets for the girls by the time they could learn to talk. They began learning scripture by oral repetition and memorization, repeating throughout the day, every day, the scripture that they were to memorize for that day. So it's perfectly natural and intentional for Jesus to use scripture from Isaiah and Joel and other places to interject into the telling of what we refer to as the parable of the sowing of the seed, the parable of the weeds, and the parable of the mustard seed. This was and still is a rabbinical teaching method known as Gezerah Shavah, in which scripture is linked to draw the listener into other related scripture to which they are already very familiar. So this brings us to our verse for today, Matthew 13, 33. One verse tossed in, I think, as an exclamation point. He just finished telling them, whoever has ears to hear, let them hear. He's been trying to paint a picture of understanding of the kingdom of heaven these past several days. And he closes this conversation with this encore statement, he told them still another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed into about three measures of flour until it worked all through the dough. Well, for most of my life, I've heard this parable through the lens of the reference to the yeast and how it permeates and all through the dough. But I think that these devout Jewish people may have heard something else also. They heard words that took them back to Genesis 18, a passage they'd memorized early in their lives. We may need to go back and read to understand more completely. You might recall that in chapter 18 of Genesis, this is where Abraham entertains three strangers who happen to venture into his camp in the middle of the day. Now we now know that this was the Lord God Almighty accompanied by two of his angels, but Abraham did not know this at the time. There's much of this story that is incredibly phenomenal, but let's think about what happened. First of all, well, he, he sees three men, strangers, and he runs to greet them. First of all, that's very shameful for an elderly man to run ever in the Bedouin culture or the Jewish culture, still is. 
So this is really odd that he would run. Plus, Abraham is 99. Yeah, 99 years old. And why was he sitting in the entrance to the tent in the heat of the day? Well, perhaps he was still recovering from the circumcision that he had just received in chapter 12. But nevertheless, he still hurries to tell Sarah to quickly get three seahs of the finest flour and bake some bread. Not the barley flour that they use every day, but the finest wheat flour. This is a great expense. Abraham then again runs to his cattle herd and selects a calf to be prepared for these three strangers who have wandered into his home. So Abraham's response is to prepare bread from over a bushel of fine flour. Ask Bobby Green, that's probably enough to bake over 50 loaves of bread and roast an entire calf for three guys that stop for a little shade and drink of water. This is an outlandish response of generosity and hospitality with which these people were very familiar. So when Jesus tells this crowd along the beach of Galilee, the kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed into about three measures of flour until it worked all through the dough, he's making reference to the redemptive power of the yeast, yes, to permeate such a large amount of dough. But the people also would recall the gospel of hospitality modeled by Father Abraham in this outrageous response to provide table for these three strangers. More than we can ask or imagine. Sound familiar? Well, may the kingdom of heaven be upon you. And may you overflow to others in the abundance of the kingdom of heaven. Shalom.